step recording. Good afternoon, Parramatta. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've got a story to tell you today, and it's about Jesus. And today I'm going to be talking about blessings and curses, because that's one of the things that separate people in this earth because of the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Those under the Old Covenant are cursed if they don't live according to the law of Moses. And so very difficult to do. So basically, they're cursed. I'm going to be reading from Jeremiah. It's talking, last week I spoke about being hedged by angels for those who are upright and righteous, and that was Job. And so I also referred to Malachi when I was talking about a, a, a scroll of remembrance for those who are upright and righteous before the Lord. And so today I'm going to be reading from verse 11 and 14, Jeremiah 29. And this is what the word says. For I know the plans I have for you, this declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart and I will be found by you, declares the Lord. So that's the word of God. But I'm going to be talking into that about unrighteous kingdoms. And it talks about these in Amos 9.8. It talks about the eyes of the Lord are upon you. In other words, the eyes of the Lord go around uh, seeking those to serve him. But also his eyes are on those who are unrighteous. And so it says there in Amos 9.8, uh, that I will destroy it from the face of the earth, talking about unrighteous nations. And there's plenty of those in the world today, and it's sad, but this message is meant to help you become blessed. So if you're not blessed, you need to be blessed, because who in their right mind want to be, would want to be cursed? And so the interesting thing about the two classes of people I just mentioned, those that are in Christ Jesus and those who are not. And so those who are not are cursed. But those who are in Christ Jesus, the curse is removed because that's what he shed his blood for, was forgiveness of sin and the removing of that curse of the law because... The commandment of Jesus is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength and to love one another. That's the only command. All the other commands rest in those. And so, but the problem is, is those that who in the world, not in Christ, um, they're uh, under the curse. They're cursed. And so you need to come out of it. And so... When we preach here, we're not preaching to the converted. They don't need to hear the message. They've already heard it and accepted it. But I'm preaching, and we preach to the lost, those who are under a curse, because when you're cursed, there's only one place for you, and that's hell. Don't go there. Uh, go to heaven, like all the people that are upright and righteous before the Lord. And so... The interesting thing about this message that I'm preaching, it's about Jesus. And what happened is Jesus came uh, as the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. That's exactly what John the Baptist said when he saw Jesus approaching him at the River Jordan before he baptized him in water. And so that's what the description of Jesus is, the Lamb of God. And so he laid down his life for you. He shed his blood for the forgiveness of sin. The Bible also says how much more um, uh, would th those who love God be blessed. How much more 
And so the important thing today is that the gospel of Jesus Christ is a simple message and it's for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son or his only begotten son and whomsoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. <clears throat> but as I was saying about faith, faith comes by hearing the word of God and so that's what happens when you hear this gospel, faith comes and what you do with that faith is important. If you act on that faith and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the grave, then you'll be saved. Also, the gospel of Jesus Christ is a message of not only forgiveness, but strengthening and empowerment. And that's why Jesus said, he said, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God and went on further to say that you cannot enter. So the empowerment of uh, the Holy Spirit coming at this, being born again, makes you a strong person because you're under the right teaching because the Holy Spirit becomes your teacher. He'll teach you all things. He comforts you. He leads you on paths of righteousness. So all those wonderful things are in God's a blessing. That's a blessing to be born again, I can tell you. And that's what we do here uh, in the streets. When we preach the gospel to you, we also offer being born again. We lay hands on you uh, and we impart the Holy Spirit. So if you're not born again, you need to be. So you can approach us and we're only too happy to minister to you. The Bible tells us about repentance, but God is faithful to forgive. If you repent, he will deliver you from all unrighteousness. So we're talking about demons. And so they come out of you. And what happens? We minister the Holy Spirit. And when we do this, that's the strong man. And so the de demons can't come back because it says in Matthew 12, 43, 45, when an evil spirit comes out of a man, it wanders around in dry places looking for a place to rest. And when it can't find anywhere, it says to itself, uh, I'll return to where I came from. He returns, finds the house, swept clean and put in order. And when he does this, uh, when he goes in, he takes with him seven other spirits more evil than himself. So the condition of that person is worse at the end than what it is at the beginning. So that's why we minister the Holy Spirit. So you, that doesn't happen to you. And so it's very good to be born again. It's a very important thing in your life. So God bless you and thank you.